I want to dig a little deeper into this, bro, because I think there's things that uh people aren't aware of as much when it comes to like Pyometra, right? Yeah. Um, a few things is I get a lot of questions in regards to Pyo is open or closed. Um, is it a Pyo? episode is sponsored by the beast of the east dog show come join us and see some of the best dogs in the country meet world-renowned breeders there's going to be working events two abkc sanctioned shows and so much more november 4th 2023 at 10 3000 courthouse road chesterfield virginia don't miss the event of the year we'll see you there so a lot of times they'd be like well, i bred my dog three days ago i think she got a pile it's physically impossible it's physically impossible to have a pile three days after you bred the dog. I mean, it's just. I hear a lot of people say, like, for example, most recently, um, I heard of a gentleman that came to me and he told me, yo, I went to so-and-so. And after he AI'd my dog, he gave my female a pile. He can't give a dog a pile. <laughs> she gives it to herself. It's a, it's, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know, she, you can't get, I've heard it in the past. Oh, you gave my dog, but you used a dirty syringe or a dirty pipette. I, okay, so how do people who use brand new pipettes like you and I every single time, How I can't give a dog a pile, you know what I mean? And if that was the case, what's the difference between an open and enclosed? Yep. Like, oh, you used the eight inch, so she got a closed? So, so, so let's, 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 let's backtrack, right? So let's, let's explain for people who may not know a pi what a pyometra ac actually is. So, textbook answer is it's an infection of the uterus. Yep, exactly. Um, I think like the, the, from what I remember, like the, the, the definition I think is actually like a pus filled uterus. If I'm, if I'm correct, like it, it, yeah, it's, it's it is a pus. Big, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think like a pus filled uterus. Um, Looks like tomato soup when it comes out. Oh, yeah, it's disgusting, disgusting. And and it's one of those things that when you see it, you need to act relatively quickly because of the fact that, you know, it can be life threatening. So now, other than explaining what the pile is, let's backtrack and explain to them. So how does how does a dog get pyometra? They give it to themselves. It could be a chemical imbalance, a hormone imbalance. Um, you know, if a dog pulls, we're right outside of it. And it, it never comes out. And when it opens up, it goes in, you know what I mean? And then it, it gets stuck in there. That nasty, disgusting blood goes into the cervix or the uterus. I, I, I would get up where the damn semen would go, you know what I mean? Listen, yeah. I'm honest, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that nasty, you know, pus, basically, this, the blood is just gross, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. stay on blood. Uh, and then it, was, it can go in. So, and that's where you don't want it to go. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And, and, and that's why, like, I mean, I've done the videos, you know, on breeders hacks where I've actually, I mean, I had, yeah. a, Frenchie, I had a Frenchie, she was pulling. Seen blood. It. That was nasty. <laughs> Bro, like 70 cc's of blood in a 20 pound Frenchie. Crazy. Yeah. But exactly what you're saying that, yep. And, and I read the same exact thing that that blood, that pulling blood could actually, uh, it can potentially turn into a pyometra. So um, as you said, I think that's and the other thing. That, and the other thing that people don't understand is blood kills semen. So if you just leave it there anyway, that blood's just going to kill that semen. Now it's, uh, you're going to have your 1% people here. Going, it don't kill semen. It kills semen. Yes, it does. It still doesn't kill when you have a million or a billion. It ain't gonna kill all of them. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the thing is, breeding it's breeding dogs is a, it's a number game. It's an odds game. So you want to have as many of them, the numbers in your favor. So if you have it to where you got good clean female and good semen going in, the numbers are in your favor. But if you got a, you know all that blood in there, she's killing half of the dang semen. I mean, you you hurt yourself, not not us. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. I agree 1000%. And that's why like what we've talked about with flushing the females and, and, you know, using, um, you know, whether it's different types of extenders or whatever the case may be to, to, to flush well, in large animals, when they breed them, they flush them with either penicillin or, um, uh, ivermectin. I'm not ivermectin. Um, um, um and, and refloxin like yeah. large animals, like cattle, they flush them before they inseminate them. And, and just so, 
Oh, I was just going to say, and just some food for thought, because we've talked about this as well with the enteroflaxin. Before you start going doing this on the, on your dogs, you got to make sure that stuff like that has to be uh, diluted and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, just guys be mindful. That's why I tell people to, that's why I tell people to use um, extender with antibiotics in it. It has yeah. antibiotics. It has penicillin and genomycin for the most part. Yep. I mean, both of them can go in there and both of them will flush it out. And it's a lot. I'd rather have extender in her than that nasty blood in her. Oh, 100%. 100%. And I mean, you can see like when you're flushing them, I mean, uh, when you first do it, it's dark blood coming out and you keep doing it until it starts getting clear, you know, and, and, and how it should be. And I have a before and after video and it, it was like, it was crazy. Her walls looked like Told you. Be clean, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. And, and so those things can lead to a pile, you know what I mean? Exactly. So so back to the pyometra, right? So now um, we've identified what it is, what causes it. So now um, when a dog has pyometra, I guess let's go into the symptoms, right? So what are the symptoms that we're going to see other than maybe that nasty discharge that's going to come out of her vulva? Um, Normally, you don't see any symptoms to about week three. For the most part, the, you know, textbook answer says three to four weeks. That's what the textbook answer tells you. Um, I've had dogs, this before you see symptoms, and that's going to be loss of appetite, uh, fever, you know, uh, lethargic. You know, these are the things that you should pay attention to as dog breeders anyway. Anytime, like I just had a dog today, didn't eat his food. I immediately... Bro, I, I bullshit you not. Look, I immediately, boom, I came inside to get the thermometer to make sure he don't have a fever. I checked his uh, capillary response when you lift up his gums and you push on it and see how fast the blood comes back. Uh, you know, I take, I let him out to see if he's play for Is he lethargic? All right, well, cool. Nothing's, I don't see any reason why he didn't eat. Well, maybe he just didn't feel like eating today, you know? Yeah. So these are the same things that you should do with the dog if you feel, you see her not eating. Okay. I understand some dogs get morning sickness. I've seen it. Okay, well, let me take her, let me take her temperature. Boom, she has a fever. All right, now I have concern. Either you need to take her to the vet and see if you have an open or a closed. If she has a discharge that looks like nasty tomato soup and it smells like, I mean, it smells like dead fish from last week. Um, yeah. yeah, it stinks, bro. So, and if you have those symptoms, I highly recommend you take her to the vet and get it a diagnosis. You know what I mean? People come to me all the time and ask me, like, if, if I think there's something wrong with the dog or whatever the case it may be. And I mean, one of the number one things I tell them, take the temperature of the dog. Like, I think people sleep on that so much. That's something you can easily do at home. Get yourself a thermometer from CVS. Run up real quick. Even if you don't have one, run to Walgreens real quick up the street. Get you a quick one, though. The Good which one does 10 seconds. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I've seen some people that use the... <laughs> I've never heard of it working. I've seen some people try to no, use it. Uh, my wife will testify. I had a gentleman, if he's watching, I'm sorry. I won't <laughs> say the name. Dude, he called me back and said, yo, her temperature's 78 degrees. I said, damn, she did. Yeah. He's like, where do you put it at? I like, where you mean, where do you get core temperature from? Oh, I put it in her vagina. I'm like, well, damn, that ain't that one. You know what I mean? Like, bro, yeah, yeah it goes rectally. You take a rectal. And then the funny part is these people, if they ever paid attention when they went to the vet, the vet does this. He asks you a question. What do you think your concern is? Boom. I think she might have a pyometria or something. She's not eating. You're yeah. telling on yourself. She's not eating. She's not drinking. She's not herself anymore. First thing he does is he gets a thermometer. He checks her temperature. She yeah. has a fever. Third, second thing he going to do, he going to draw some blood and he going to see if her white blood count or red blood counts out of whack. And then boom, he knows that she has an infection. Third thing he going to do, if it's a pyometria, her white count's going to come through the roof uh, and he's going to flip her over and do a sonogram. He's, he's going to look for a big, large gray mass and, and he's going he's gonna to tell you, I think she's got a pile. And, and, if you what he's gonna do. and if you have your own ultrasound machine, then you can check that yourself, you know? Um, if you know what you're looking for, it looks like a large gray mass. Yeah, I've seen it like once. I've seen it once, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough that it wasn't my dog, but I've only seen it once on my own ultrasound machines. But yeah, yeah. It, it's exactly that because you're just looking for you're just looking for the pus in her uterus. But yeah, um, I would definitely get it diagnosed from a veterinarian because that is nothing. Because the yeah. that leads us into the next the uh, next portion of it. There's an open and a closed. You know what I mean? And if you don't know which one is which, you're gonna need a actual veterinarian to tell you the difference because uh open is pretty easily uh, remedied with some 
medication. You know, they're probably going to put her on clapamox and enrofloxin together. Yep. And, you know, that will clean it out. Uh, there's only a few uh, antibiotics that can penetrate the uterine wall. And that's, you know, enrofloxin is one of them, you know, and Batril. Real quick, you made me just think of something now. This is just me thinking out loud, right? So let's say she has an open pyometra, right? Which open pyometra, like, as you said, is... She's dripping pus. Yeah, is much more treatable because the, yeah. every, it's her, her cervix is still open and that she can be able to... It can all come out. The pus... Out. Is, yeah, everything... The vault, for, for people to understand, the vault's not closed. The doors are open. The doors are stuck open. She yes. ain't pregnant because the doors are open. Yep, yep. So the pus is coming out, coming out, coming out. What it made me think of is... And this is just to pick your brain. What would it make sense to try flushing the female if she hasn't? I have. Pressure? I've me personally. I've flushed them with genomycin. Uh, even even with, when they had it, I've done a genomycin with saline with a sterile water, mix it together. And whoosh, mm. You know what I mean? With a, uh, uh, a TCI machine. That's what we've done. I had one. I had a dog. She was like one of my most valuable dogs in my opinion at the time, and. Uh, this one was a messed up, and this is how I found out she didn't have a cervix. Wait, what? Yeah, she was born without a cervix. So she, we thought she had a pio. I promise you, we thought she had a pio. Yeah. She could never take. She got real sick. Blah blah blah. We thought she had a pio. So we went to do a flush. We got it all mixed up. You know, one part genomycin. I think it was like two parts of, uh, sterile water. We got it all mixed up. Like we were about to do the AI. We got the scope in there. I mean, my vet's like, just kept going. He said, Chris. I said, what you mean? He said, uh, she ain't got the right tools to have babies. Wow. I was like, what? Wow. And she was born without a cervix. Wow. So, so that's why she never took. Her name so, was Tilly. Yeah. So there was no, there was like no, no, no dorsal. So she it was crazy, crazy man. Open? It just literally, I promise you, because this is what this is what made me take her to the vet. That when she came in the heat, I told the vet, look, we done, we done. I done tried regular AI too many times. We're going to do a, I mean, from day one, first time she comes in the heat, I'm going to test her and I'm going to breed her at home. That's what I told him. He was like, all right, cool. Day one, bro, she took the whole pipette and half the syringe. I was like, well, damn, maybe my timing is just really bad. Half the syringe. And, uh, oh, half the syringe. God. Day one of blood. So I will tell you probably like, I'm testing her, I'm testing her. She's she's cycling normal and everything. Yeah. So we get time to the t down to the day where she's ready to be bred. And boom. I said, man, let's just flush her, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then we can in inseminate her and uh, nothing. It wasn't nothing in there. Wow. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. But he was willing to try something. I was like, nah, I'm cool. I'm just putting her in a home. She was amazing too, bro. I mean, absolutely gorgeous animal. But no, she didn't that's have no cervix. Wow, that's Whatever crazy. it is, cervix uterus. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she didn't have a cervix, bro. It was crazy. Yeah, and you, that's where you that's where it closes. And so yeah. we were willing, he, he was willing to bypass it and just inseminate her into the horns and then sew it shut. I'm like, nah, we ain't going to do all that. That's a little too crazy for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, mean, because it could be older, you know what I mean? That makes sense. And, and and then yet again, going back to what we were talking about with pyometra, that there, there's two different versions, right? So now, yeah. uh, one obviously being- You can flush them, going back to what your question was, flushing them. Yeah, you can flush them. That makes okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense. I have and you can put them on the antibiotics. You can put them on the antibiotics, and you know if you have a closed one. Here, here's what yeah. I told Andrew, and this is what I'll tell anybody. If you have a closed pyometria, you're about to tell on yourself for a few reasons. One, you're going to see if you have a really good relationship with your vet, because to fix a closed pyometria, it is. Really <laughs>